Get a cup of coffee. Just relax a minute. I'm still on the road. I'll be home in a couple days. Let me just try to put it in perspective. Kofi Annan. We really don't need you to go to... What are you going to do, Kofi Annan? You're the former um, Secretary General of the United Nations. You and your son were involved in so much corruption. What are you going to do in Syria, in Damascus, meeting with President Assad? There's 111 dead bodies wrapped up in sheets, packing through the streets of Damascus. There are dead babies, dead mothers, dead fathers... The massacring, the murdering, the madness, the meanness, the maliciousness, the mentality of the radical Islamic Muslims. Are you serious? What are you going to do, Kofi Annan? Nothing. Why are you meeting with him? That is the part that's... Listen to me, folks. We talk to Assad till we're blue in the face. And the bodies keep piling up. The bodies keep piling up. You've got 11,000 dead people. You've got 50,000 refugees fleeing out of the country, whether they went to Turkey, Jordan, or Lebanon. You've got fighting going on in Lebanon now over Assad. You've got the murdering. The, the This guy's going and killing. He killed these people in a residential neighborhood. These weren't the fighters. This wasn't the free Syrian army, the rebels, trying to overthrow his government. This was the people living in apartment buildings and neighborhoods. He's been doing this. He's been doing this for a year. And for some reason, the, the, the United Nations Security Council still has one member of the Permanent Five who's still wringing his hands. It's Russia. But I think even they are to the point where they have to cave. And they will cave. And Assad will come down, as I've been saying for over a year. Let me read to you right here information that came to me um, from the New York Times. I'm not sure who owns the New York Times. I don't know who owns every news organization in the world. But I could say this. I shouldn't be held guilty for association if I read an article from somebody in the news media. Okay? Just throwing that out there for free game. Um, look at this. Kofi Annan, the United Nations Special Envoy for Syria, arrived Monday in Damascus, where he expressed horror at the massacre of more than 100 villagers in Halua and urged both sides to stop the fighting. I'm personally shocked and horrified by the tragic incident in Hula two days ago, which took so many innocent lives, children, women, and men. Mr. Anand said in a brief remarks from the lobby of his hotel that were broadcast by satellite television and networks. He stressed that respecting the ceasefire was the responsibility of all sides, saying his message of peace was intended for everyone with a gun. Here's the problem you have, Kofi Anand. You, you act like everybody needs to listen. But you're not addressing the real issue. Assad continues to murder the civilians. He is murdering the civilians. You don't show up and say, everybody with a gun should put the gun down. We need to uh, respect one another. The people are sitting at home cooking dinner. Children are in the yard playing. When Assad's thugs, under the direct order of Assad come into the neighborhoods and start slaughtering, murdering, blowing up the apartment buildings. So don't show up with this, we all need to respect the ceasefire agreement. Show up and be a man if you're going to show up at all. And say, Assad, your atrocities have to stop. You are murdering the innocent. We have 111 dead bodies wrapped up in sheets. We got kids' heads blowed off. We're not here to pacify you. I'm not here to just talk and hold your hands and sing kumbaya. I'm here to tell you that hell is coming down upon you and that your atrocities have brought the complete instability in, in instability in the entire Middle East. You are threatening the very peace process itself. You must go. 
You know, everybody gets, everybody says to me, Pastor, you're, you're too passionate. You need to relax. You know? Everybody got real upset. I mean, everybody got upset about the, the two naked guys in uh, Miami, okay, fighting in the street in the middle of the afternoon. A couple days ago. And the one guy's eating the face off the other guy. Two naked men in the streets. Do we know what the, what that's about yet? And he eating the guy's face. Do you understand the demon spirits involved here? I mean, I re I remember reading about a um, a man, the demoniac of Kadera, who was running naked in the cemetery. They couldn't hold him hand or feet. You know, they could bind him in chains and feathers. He could break them. He was absolutely uncontrollable. Even he, he. He looks like a, a Sunday school skipper compared to this dude in Miami. Naked, in the street, with another naked man. Does anybody know what that's about? Got beaten the guy up in broad daylight on a Saturday afternoon on a, on a Memorial Day weekend. Gets him down on the street, beats him to un unconsciousness, and then eats his face off. Eats his face. The police officer that jumped out of the car and saw this literally jumped back. When he looked into the eyes of the glaze of the demons, the legions of demons that were coming from this man's eyes. As he ate the face of a dying man, he, fortunately the man who, who was beaten and his face eaten until he was unrecognizable is still alive. The police officer commanded the man to stop eating. He wouldn't, so he shot him. Still didn't stop him. He kept eating. He shot him again. He had to shoot him. Sounds bad, don't it? We're horrified by it. That's nothing compared to the demons that are in Assad. It's not even close. There's not even a third of the devils in that man that are in Assad. Don't be fooled by his Amante suits. Don't be fooled by his wife shopping sprees in Paris. Don't be, don't be uh, uh, rocked to sleep by his height and his stature and his story. The guy is a cold face killer. It's cold-blooded. Little McDonald's coffee in a Are You Serious Jesus Save coffee cup. I think the reason my passion is just running high right now as I'm I'm tired of the bloodshed I really am I'm watching a world fall apart I'm watching the EU collapse rumors are Spain is done uh, I, I have some information here to blow your mind Spain thought they was going to have to spend somewhere between two to four billion dollars to bail out their economy okay um I forgot the person who sent me this information. Forgive me, okay, but it's great information. I think it was Ken, Ken, up in Vancouver, Canada. Um, but they found out late Friday after the American markets closed that Spain actually has to have twenty-four billion dollars to bail out their economy. It's worse than the German co economy's collapse of 1923. According to former presidential candidate Lyndon LaRouche, the euro is done. It can't be saved. The e economic stre stress upon it is impossible to overcome. If this transatlantic euro system is done, it's just band-aid after band-aid and not even the band-aids are sticking anymore folks it's gonna happen the run on the banks in Greece the Greece people have quit paying their taxes there will be I'm telling you right now by the by June 1st June 1st the euro is in serious I don't know what's gonna happen by June 1st just watch I don't know what's gonna happen I don't know what is going to happen economically but the Debt payments are due at the end of May, in the next three days. There's no way these nations can pay the bill. What is going to be the fallout? Are you saved? The mark of the beast is almost here. Give your life to Jesus.